I shall start by copying this file, so I'll copy that, paste it, and I'm going to call it docker compose.dev.yaml. Uh, you might see docker compose.local or whatever, it depends on your team's naming conventions, but this is what I'm going to use here. Initially here we're going to consider having separate files for dev and production, i.e. you use one file in dev and one file in production, but later we're going to have a look at overrides, which I think is better, and that's where you can use multiple files, and it involves creating a hierarchy where the config in one Docker Compose file can override that in another. Okay, so this is that dev file. What I'm going to do is go through both of the files, the dev file and the production file, and just add or remove what I actually need. So for the Docker Compose dev file, I'm going to keep it more or less the same. The only thing I want to do is remove this because we're not going to pin this vendor file anymore. We do want to mount our app folder to this location inside the container. Just scrolling through, I think all the rest of this is perfectly fine because we've sort of been working on a development configuration up until now. Our production file will contain some edits so, working down here, this is okay. Ports, we still want to expose the ports on production, otherwise there'd be no way into our application. But we don't need to expose the ports for the database because we were just using that so that we could use like a client and go in there and have a look at things. So, we'll remove that. These environment variables, obviously we're not going to hard code these, so I'll create a .amv file maybe in a later recording. Restart unless stopped. So in production, I'd probably change this to restart always, but I still want to be able to run this file for the time being on my local machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave that as one of the last things that we change, like towards the end of the whole recording. Okay, I'm happy with the database volumes. This needs to change. In fact, we don't need any of these because what we're going to do is copy the files into the container. In fact, that's what we did when we worked on the Docker file in the last recording. So what we can do is just remove that completely because the main reason we have this is so that when we make changes inside of this folder, it immediately gets reflected in here. But we're not going to need that in production. Let's get rid of that. Another change I'm going to make is I'm going to do a similar thing here actually. I'm going to, instead of doing this volume mounting here, I'm going to do what we did with our PHP Docker file and I'm going to copy the files from there into the container. So let's go and do that now. Inside of our Nginx folder, we'll create a Docker file for this. And so from will be nginx and we'll say latest one thing i will say on using latest i've never had this problem with nginx but i have had it with other things such as node which can be a bit more flaky and um, the image hasn't been compatible with like other services that i've been using so if you do get that kind of uh, problem then maybe you want to specify a particular image from nginx so check out that option if you do get problems the next thing i want to do is actually copy these so i'll just copy that so i've got a reference i'll just add it as a comment so i am copying from that location in this project then you leave a space and then you're copying to there inside of the container one other copy to do so that we have that entry point into this we need to copy our public directory where our index.php file is to a location inside the container. And so that will be app public and that will be to here. Okay, so just a reminder of that location. If we look at our default conf, that is the location that we specified as our root. Okay, I can delete this now. I'll go back to the Docker Compose, our production Docker Compose. And so here we're not going to ask for an image because that image is being pulled in in the docker file which we just created. In fact what we're going to do is we're going to say build and then we need to specify the docker file to build from. That is in nginx docker file and I think this should be okay. Just one last check. That all looks good to me. One thing I will say about this is that later on, I'm still probably going to change it even further. Instead of doing the build, what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
build the image and push them up to the registry and then here again we'll go back to saying image but instead we won't be using the image from Docker or the official Nginx image will be using the image which we are building with our Docker file there. And so that means that you're saving a load of building as part of the deployment process because the image will have already been pre-built and it'll be just pulling in that image and then creating the container from it. Okay, I now want to try both of these builds. So I'll try this production one first. Docker, compose, say up, dash dash, build, hyphen D, Let's go. That's built, let's go and check localhost. Okay, everything is working there. Just wanna show you something now. So if I go to app public index, and then at the top, if I do echo world, or should I say echo hello world, When I go back to the browser and refresh, we don't actually see it. And the reason that we don't actually see that is because we are not doing that volume mounting from our app folder anymore. So we've copied the files directly straight from the app folder into our container and that is the end of it. So the container is just gonna use what files were copied into there. With our dev setup, on the other hand, we should be able to do that because we are doing the mounting. If we go back to our docker compose.dev file, Here's our volume mounting, so any changes that we do make in this app folder will be reflected. So let's go and run these down and then we'll run up our dev environment. So docker compose down. Okay, so how do we build up our network using this docker compose dev file? So by default, docker compose, the command will look for a file called docker-compose.yaml, but you can specify a different Docker compose file, and that's what we need to do here. So I'm gonna say docker compose, then it's hyphen F for file. And so here we just need our alternative, our dev file, docker compose.dev.yaml. Up, hyphen hyphen build dash D. Let's check this in the browser. Okay, so as we can see the hello world, but we actually put that in there before we built the container. So let's go over and change this. In fact, all we need to do is just remove it. And then if we go back to the browser, refresh, as you can see, it has gone. Put it back in there, just change it to something else, just to be doubly sure, hello world again, refresh. So as you can see, our changes are being reflected straight away.